I feel like sometimes in the West, we like to ignore that there are differences between Big true. men and women. But I feel like here in Korea, people understand that there are differences. Wow. And it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. But they don't right. demonize any characteristics that are inherently masculine or feminine. Society is mm. not saying you must have traditional gender roles. Mm. But if you want to do that, people don't seem they to it. demonize you. Where I feel like they don't call you a pick me. Now, I mean, I was like that. Like I remember when I was in high school, about to go to college, I had a friend, and all she wanted to do was just get married and have kids. And you she judged had her. a lot of kids. Megan. So she did that right out of high school. I remember kind of judging her like, ew, why would you do that? You have no ambition. Hi, feminism. So then I Guys, you're looking at the thumbnail, you're looking at the title of the video, y'all already know what time it is. It is time to get active. Title of today's video, what being married in Korea taught me how not to screw up your marriage. This content today comes from content creator Megan Moon, who has almost a million subscribers. Now, she's an American-born citizen now living in Korea, and we've encroached on this topic previously on the channel, the idea of the difference between the ideologies of Western women and Eastern women. So I think it'll be interesting to go over from her perspective Without further ado. So as we know, Korea is very different from my home country of the USA. Big true. And through marriage, <laughs> I've <laughs> also learned a little bit more about some differences that we have in the way that we view relationships Good. and the way that we go about we'll them, etc. So I thought I would talk today about some things that I learned from being married here in Korea. Let's the do this. The very first thing that I learned was that marriage is duty. And it's quite different from like kind of what we see like in the Hollywood and in media and stuff. And I feel like kind of our view of marriage like in America is a bit more romanticized. It's like this romantical kind of Disney kind of fairy tale type big thing. True, that we big like true, big true. View with marriage, I feel like sometimes we lose a lot of the duty. And a lot of people in sometimes. marriage just think about you know the things that they want to get. Like I want to yes. get married so I can get this and I can get that and I can have love and happiness and stuff like that. Scripture. But I notice in a lot of Asian countries like they view marriage as, work. as duty. Of course. Of course, you know, people love each other like when they get married, but there's more of an aspect on the things that you need to contribute and things that you need to do in the relationship to keep it afloat. And I notice when people Yo. think of marriage here, they think less about, okay, what am I gonna be getting? Like, give to me, yes. give to me. And there's less of this sort of entitled feeling for what you think you should be getting in marriage. And people tend to focus on how they can make it work and the things that they need to do within that marriage. And one thing- Yo, that is, is so many uh, good points. Sorry for yelling. <laughs> but. I'm into this video, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's so many good points there, right? It's like, when you focus on the duty word, right? You think of job, you think of work, something that you have to do, something that you bring your skill sets into doing, something that you train for, right? That like, you get maybe get a certification for, you get education from, right? You get teachings from someone or somebody, and then you implement that into yourself and then you bring that to a proverbial table duty not all this i am the table bullshit that you hear so often over here but it's like the idea of you know you getting a job somewhere and then you walking in and every day that you walk into the door it's all about what the job can do for you no like you are here to contribute. You contribute here for the things that were set up when you signed up for this job. And because you do good job in doing your job, then this relationship with this company can continue into the future. But if you come in just every day, like, oh no, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna kick my goddamn feet up and get fat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we can't continue this. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on that I noticed is instead of people getting their happiness from what they're getting, oh. like I'm happy when my partner's just doing this for me or when I'm getting this love or when I'm getting the things I feel like I'm entitled to get, is people feel more happiness in knowing that they fulfilled their duty in marriage. And I think that's something mm, that's actually it's more really external nice happens. because you can't really control what other people do, right? You can't control like if someone's gonna do something for you that day, but you can control the things that you're doing. And I think when your happiness comes from 
a sense of fulfillment for doing the for things others. that you're supposed to do to yeah. keep the marriage running, then I feel like that leads to much longer yes. happiness as opposed to just what can I get, what can I yes. get, what can I get. So let's compare. It, it, like it, it has, it's like purpose as well, right? Like it's, it's the same thing. What she's talking about, again, transition that to what you do in your lives outside of your relationships, your purpose. You get a lot of fulfillment and joy out of what you can contribute to society right? Your usefulness, your utility, right? And then that then transitions or translates into happiness and purpose and fulfillment within yourself. Same thing is when you get into a together mindset with someone, switching it of what that person can do for you and uh, unto what can you contribute that will fulfill also your purpose because that fulfillment in other in someone else is going to make you more internally happy. But that mon that right there is completely flipped when you just pander to people and you tell them that they are the prize. It's completely flipped. Like marriage to like a business or something, right? <clears throat> so for a business to run well, the employees should always be doing their job. Great like example. The boss said, I like her. You know what? You can just work when you feel like it. Yeah. everyone only worked when they felt like it instead of what you have to do every day then the business might not go so well and so I same thing like, i was trying uh, to say with marriage it's similar like you don't always feel like doing things that you're supposed to do all the time but that's just kind of part of it and this is just a very light example it's the only thing that just kind of popped into my head right now but this is not something that moon said i need you to get me my coffee every day <laughs> but it's just kind of something that i like to do in the morning is to make mr moon coffee shout out to weeble for sponsoring today's video Weeble is a free, free stock trading application that I personally use to manage my investments. Open up an account and make a deposit of any amount and get two free stocks worth up to $2,300. And you get five bucks of free crypto as well. Listen guys, it's critically important that you start your investment journey. So start it today using my link and get free money. Do it right now, link in the description. Sometimes I don't feel like getting his cafe latte in the morning, but I know it makes him happy and it makes, it keeps our marriage going. And when he sees that I'm getting up to get him his cafe latte, even if I want to be sleeping in, it makes him happy too. It makes him want to keep doing things, you know, for me. Yeah. So we just keep giving to each other and each other and so each other and we continue to like thrive in that way, right? It's not about what you want to do. It's what you have to do for the marriage. Cause once you get married, it's the marriage. You do things for the marriage, yeah. right? Of course, you can still do things like for yourself, but if those things are undermining the marriage, then you probably shouldn't do it. And another thing that I noticed is those feelings of love tend to stay and continue to happen when both people are fulfilling their role and doing their duties in the marriage. Things work out that you put effort into. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it did. Take from it what you want. I, you know, I, I appreciate what she's talking about because, um, you know, like people, I, you know, I get women that ask me, so why are you not in a relationship right now? Well, I got too many things cooking right now, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I got too many things because for me to take time off of the things that I'm doing right now to focus in a together mindset with someone else, like, will it come in the future? For sure. Of course. I've actually been thinking about, should I do a dating show on the channel? You know what I'm saying? Is it, would that be interesting guys? You guys let me know if you would want to see some live shit like that. But then also too, I think about the amount of hours in a day I'm looking and focusing on my purpose. And then I think about, okay, well taking some of those hours away to be in a together mindset. And it's just right now I'm okay because I got so many things on a goddamn plate at least right now, but you know, it might change somewhere in the future because life is all about balance, you know? It's ebbs and flows. I'm going hard in a flow state when it comes to my purpose, but you know, things might shift into the future. So the next thing that I learned is that you should always want to be your best self and kind of always be upgrading and improving, like self-improving yourself. Self-improving yourself. How redundant was that? So what I mean is like, for example, you know, I've had friends who were engaged and they both said, wow, since I'm engaged, this person wants to marry me. I should be my best self. Let me start going to the gym and eating healthy so we can live a long, healthy life together and I can be like my fittest self because this person chose me, right? They're stuck with me. They can only be with me. I'm rocking with everything so she's saying. So I need saying. to always be my best self and remain healthy and fit, et cetera. Um, yes. As opposed to saying, well, we're married now. I don't have to go to the gym anymore. Right. Like, that's not what you really want to do, right? You want to <laughs> always be trying to be, you know, your best self and taking care of yourself and um, not just, you know, for something like taking care of your body, but in terms of your personality and the things that 
you're learning and growing and maturing with yeah. as well. I know, like, for me, like, after I got married, it kind of was a push. It made me be like, wow, okay, well, someone chose me, and this person's only going to be with me, so I need to do the best that I can to be, like, upgrading and improving myself. And that's something that my husband does a lot as well, and I've noticed a lot of people around me doing that as well, and it's something that I think that is it's quite beautiful. And I think when you have two people who are constantly working on themselves and wanting to do their best and be their best, then that naturally keeps the relationship going as well. A lot of people here think of marriage as kind of like something we need to work at together. It's not something that either just matches or doesn't, right? Any good marriages that you've seen have a lot of work. And I feel like a lot of people tend to just kind of know that here and it's kind of something that's more in the culture. So the next thing that I've- Listen, I can't, hate to keep bringing it back to the example of working, but it's the same thing from a working perspective. You don't just go into an establishment and just sit in the same role. Like as soon as you get the job, it's like, oh, well, all that education that I got before, there's no continuing education. I know everything that I know. I'm just gonna do this job. No, that's not the goal. At least it wasn't for me. My goal was always to go up and up that I, I, I went with different education, certifications, moving, networking, da 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 but it, it was time that I spent to improve on myself because I know I wanted the inevitable inevitable goal of doing well from an employment perspective, but not just doing well or medium, but exceeding expectation. And I think it's the same thing from this perspective as well. What continuing education can you do, whether it be internal to your partner or external to shit happening around you in order to make it better? Let's keep going kind of learned to do here is I really learned to embrace the differences between men and women. I feel like sometimes in the West, we like to ignore that there are differences between Big true. men and women, but I feel like here in Korea, people understand that there are differences. Wow. And it doesn't mean that one is better than the other, but they don't right. demonize any characteristics that are inherently masculine or feminine. People allow for people to play to their strengths, especially in relationships. And I think that's something that's really nice. So there's and no feminine in is Korea? You're not necessarily bound to the expectations that people have of this is man and this is woman. Society mm. is not saying you must have traditional gender roles. Mm. But if you want to do that, people don't seem accept to it. demonize you where I feel like sometimes you in the me. West now. I mean, I was like that. Like I remember when I was in high school about to go to college, I had a friend and all she wanted to do was just get married and have kids. And you she judged had her. a lot of kids. Megan. So she did that right out of high school. I remember kind of judging her like, ew, why would you do that? You have no ambition. Hi, feminism. So then I kind of like really stopped talking to her because I thought, oh my God, what is that? Damn, why Megan. Why you just want to do that? And like live with a man who makes the money and do that. Like be independent and have some ambition and stuff. Like that was kind of how I used to I think her truth, about though. women who wanted to do that. But one thing that Korea has taught me is that, you know, everyone like chooses what they want to do. If a woman wants to take on a traditional role and that's what she wants to do, then we shouldn't tell her she's wrong for wanting to do that. Yeah. You know, I think we should be able to choose what we want to do and people shouldn't look down on people who want to do those traditional roles in that way. I used to be one of those people who looked down on women like that as I was going to college, getting my degree that I'm not using at all in debt. <laughs> not anymore, but was in debt. She ain't got no debt and she got like four kids and she's happy. I see her on Instagram, so. Oh, and growing up That's too, like up. my parents were always like, yeah, be independent, do this. Like, don't depend on no man, don't need no man. And now that I'm married, I'm like, I needed him. Where have you been, Mr. Moon? There it is. <laughs> okay. Where have you been? Like, why didn't I meet you? No, if I had met him when I was 22. You would've been ready. He might not have liked me because Mr. Moon, my husband, he likes to feel like needed. And at that time, I was kind of like anti anything. Like, I don't need no help from no man. Mr. Uh -oh. Moon, he loves like carrying things and like doing things and just being helpful. And I think uh -oh. in the past, like old Megan would have thought like, oh, it's because he thinks I can't do it. I can do pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, 20 pounds strapped to me. I can do a pull-up. I don't need you to carry my bags. <laughs> <laughs> she was but made yeah. for YouTube. <laughs> she's she's extremely talented. All right, guys, I'll end the video right here. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down in the description box down below. Go over there, check out the remainder of this video as well as all the other dope videos on her channel. Um, I think it was really important the way that she left that off, like in the idea that, you know, her in her young, um, more independent <laughs> mindset would have been ready for the values of her current um, husband, I think it's fascinating. I think it's very interesting, but I think it's 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 even more fascinating that um, she 
until she went over to another country and saw it from a different perspective that she was able to relinquish the bullshit <laughs> that was taught to her right over here. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's good to see that ascension. You know what I'm saying? Because like at the end of the day, I believe in the ideals of feminism when it comes to equality. Do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? But just be accountable for the choices that you are making and how the opposite sex is going to look at you because of those choices and not shame them for looking at you that particular way. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, we can change and move and shape with modern times, but our biology is not going to change and shift at the same rate and degree. OK, men will still be men. Women will still be women on average. And if there's men and women that are acting outside of that, well, they're, they're outliers to the case or they're lying to themselves. Questions, comments, concerns? Y'all already know what to do. Media tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. All right, this was a great one. I appreciate going over content like this. Guys, go over to my Instagram and continue to send me dope content just like this one. All right, last but not least, I got a Patreon. If you guys want to support me, make sure that the ship is running outside of YouTube because you know they finicky like shit. Link down below. Beam up. See what's in store. And I'll see you soon. Until next time, YouTube.